Games New to Me. Please like and subscribe. Hey guys, Rob here for Games New to Me. Welcome back. And right now I just finished watching the WWE Money in the Bank ladder match. And I've got some thoughts I'd like to share with you. I will probably go in order. I don't think I missed anything. And if there was a pre-show, I didn't watch it. Was the show good overall? Um, yeah. It was, it was alright. Some of the booking decisions were mind-bogglingly stupid. Vince McMahon's fingerprints were all over the women's Money in the Bank ladder match. And yes, there will be spoilers in this video, so if you don't want to if you haven't seen it and you don't want any spoilers, don't watch this video right now. Wait till you see the show and come back and listen to my opinion, or if you don't mind spoilers, proceed ahead, but you have been warned. So, we had the women's ladder in the ma Ugh. we had the women's money in the bank ladder match. Um uh, Carmella with James Ellsworth cheated and she won the Money in the Bank ladder match. Now, what exactly happened? Uh, James Ellsworth got in the ring, interfered in the match. It's a no disqualification match. And it's the first, it bears mentioning and repeating that this is the first ever women's Money in the Bank ladder match. First ever women's la Money in the Bank ladder match. And how does it end? It ends with James Ellsworth getting into the ring, climbing the ladder, grabbing the briefcase, and tossing it to Carmella. Oh my god, Vince McMahon, how out of touch are you? You just played a video package before the match touting the women's revolution in wrestling and how far women have come. And how do you book this match? You book it so that a man, James Ellsworth, is the one who fetches the briefcase for Carmella? Now, okay, I can kind of get it from, oh, he, they're heels. And they do heelish things. No. 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 Not in the first inaugural Women's Money in the Bank ladder match. In a match like that, one of the ladies should have grabbed the briefcase. James Ellsworth could have gotten involved, could have gotten dropped, kicked away, tossed out of the match by the referee, any number of things. He could have helped Carmelo win, that's fine. But to have him, a man, climb up that ladder and grab the briefcase in the first ever women's Money in the Bank ladder match, and then just toss it to Carmella. That is just a smack in the face. I'm sorry. I'm not a feminist or anything like that, but I'm I'm going to call out wrongs when I see them. And God, that was a wrong, bad idea. I don't know if it was Kevin Dunn or if it was Vince McMahon, but those fingerprints are all over the match. How tone deaf do you have to be? Your own video package touted how far the women have come and you finish the match with a man grabbing the briefcase in the first ever women's money in the bank ladder match? What the hell were you thinking, Vince? And the crowd hated it. They booed and not in a good way because they had the exact same reaction I'm having. They called bullshit on this. A man got the briefcase in the first ever women's Money in the Bank ladder match. I mean, come on, be serious. This is ridiculous. It's an insult to all the women, all the great wrestlers in that ring. They were really putting on a really decent match. And for it to end like that is awful. Fine, have James Ellsworth do heelish things, have him help Carmella, but don't have him climb the ladder in the first ever women's Money in the Bank ladder match and then snatch the briefcase for her and then just toss it to her or hand it to her. That's just, oh, it makes me feel dirty. Just, oh, uh, yuck. Vince, you're tone deaf and out of touch. 
and obviously don't know what the hell is going on in your own company and what you've been promoting all along with these video packages. Big thumbs down on this for the finish. The match was fine. It was a ladder match, a multi-person ladder match. I'm not crazy about them. They're fine. You know, a lot of good stuff was shown. But the booking of that finish was just awful. I mean, yuck, disgusting, awful, awful, awful stuff. Vince, get a clue. Listen to the younger people in your company. Don't do stuff like this because it just makes you come off looking really, really bad. Just, uh, if, if you can't see what's wrong with this picture with James Ellsworth fetching the briefcase, a man fetching the briefcase for Carmella, then I don't know what to tell you. Sorry, bro. Yeah, a little Vince Russo there for you guys. Sorry, bro. No, that is just wrong, and you effed up on the booking of this match. I'm sorry. That's the way it is. Now let's move on to the next match. We had the New Day versus the Usos. Now, keep in mind, the women's... Correction. The first ever women's Money in the Bank ladder match ended in a most unpleasant way, and the fans reacted appropriately. It didn't get heat in a heelish way. It got heat as in, an, as in a facepalm kind of way. It was the worst kind of heat a match can get. But now you have the New Day versus the Usos for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. Okay, it was a fine match. It was fine. It was what you'd expect from the Usos and from the New Day. And had some good spots. I'm not going to, you know, say that it was the greatest match ever. It wasn't. It was fine. It was good. It was slightly above average WWE style tag team championship match. It was decent. But that finish, after the last finish with the women's match... You have the Usos just get themselves counted out. Why would the fa why would you expect the fans to still be on board when you kind of screwed them and completely disappointed them now two times in a row? Yeah, the New Day wins. There's the moral victory, and I know that there's more matches to be had ahead and a whole rivalry and all that stuff. But the fact is. Your first match, your first actual pay-per-view match of the night was a disaster because of that horrible booking of the ending. And now you book another ending that's going to make the fans unhappy and they responded in kind, calling it bullshit. Because now they've got a bullshit sandwich. There was the women's bullshit finish and then piled onto that the Usos getting themselves counted out to save their tag team championships. Too much crap one after the other, and it set a bad mood in the audience, in my opinion. It certainly set a bad mood with me. Have it go to a time limit draw, have it go any which way, make it a draw, do whatever. A no contest, interference, count, well not a count out, but anything but that. Because that was just awful. It was, and I'm bleeding for some reason from my left arm. Huh. Oh, well, never mind. I'm bleeding a bit. It's okay. So, yeah, the Usos lose the match by countout, but retain the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. New Day win the match, but it's a hollow victory because they don't get the championships. And I'm okay with that. It's just one after the other comes off so bad. Oh, my God, it comes off so bad. Now, we've got the turd sandwich. Let's continue with the next match, which was Lana versus Naomi. Uh, it was... Okay. Lana came off as green as she actually is. She doesn't know a thing about wrestling. Uh, correction. She knows the moves that you saw because she delivered them like someone who just learned a few wrestling holds and moves. And is strictly following directions on how a wrestling match should transpire. 
There's no storytelling here. It's just awfulness. Kudos to Naomi for making the best of it. She really helped keep that match together because Lana is not ready for prime time and the fans knew it and reacted as they were chanting for Rusev. The match was awful, but it was all because Lana is hard to carry. She's never wrestled. She's bad. It's a fact. It's on video. You can watch it on demand on the WWE Network for only $9.99 a month. And yeah, I, I have the network and it is a good value, but that's neither here nor there. It was just awful. It was filler. It was awful. It didn't need to happen. Okay, there was a little bit of a tease when Carmella and James Ellsworth's music hit and she comes down to the ring during the match, which is confusing because usually anyone who's going to cash in money in the bank generally waits until the champion has been beaten down or whatever and then they pick up a easy windfall. But the match was still going on and nobody had a decisive upper hand. So why did Carmella come out? I get the tease that, oh, is she cashing in or isn't she? But it, it was obvious she wasn't going to because Naomi was nowhere near beat down. In fact, she was winning the match. So it was... It was dumb. That's what it was. It was simply dumb. Nothing came of it. In the end, Naomi retains with her submission hold, which I forget what it's called, but good on her. She wins the match, and yeah. Now, let's move on to the next match. And we have tag team action. As we have Brazongo. Wait, no, wait a second. Actually, we have a video package for... A... It's a Brazongo bit. It's getting old very fast. A few nods to Polly with the phone and some other stuff that people like people who follow wrestling and have been following it for years will pick up on that it was just a lot of winks and nods to different things from the past. Frankly, I'm getting a little bit tired of the whole skit thing with them being fashion police detectives, Miami Vice style crap. It's it's just getting old. Anyway, they get a videotape backstage and a mystery voice says, if you want to know who we are, meet us in the ring. So obviously a match is set up for later on in the evening. Cool little thing that happened was Maria Kanellis and Mike Kanellis are now back in WWE. Well, Mike, for the first time, I believe, I could be wrong, he might have been in de developmental or something like that. But I am so glad to see Maria. That was a really pleasant surprise. They're playing heels, sort of uh, matchmaker, love experts type couple. Very heelish. I don't know if the gimmick will work. I think it will because I think they've done this one before in some incarnation before in maybe Ring of Honor. I, I, I can't be certain. It was good to see Maria. She looks great. Uh, Mike, I haven't really seen him wrestle. I've heard of him, but we'll see where this goes. Um, at the moment, I really have no opinion of the gimmick. It might be fine. It might be terrible. We'll find out soon enough. Let's see. Then we have a video package for none other than Jinder Mahal. And he's the Matahara, whatever he is. And it's built up for the Indian market, which was really cool. One thing I will say that was a good thing to show, and it was kind of a nod to the audience who kind of figured this out, why Jinder is champion, why he's WWE champion, because you saw news reports from various, I guess, Indian television stations talking about Jinder Mahal becoming the WWE champion. And it was kind of a big deal, and it got them the publicity they wanted in India, which is a new market for them. And it's a huge market if they can really get a foothold, but you got to get people hooked on wrestling. And gender as champion makes sense. And yeah, they got the news buzz they wanted in India, and 
it definitely left an impression, I would imagine, on the people in India. So we'll see how that develops. But yeah, it was it was a good package. It, it was fun to see uh, Indian, I don't know, news broadcasts talking about gender becoming champion. That was kind of funny. I, I imagine they were all real. I don't think that they faked them, which is pretty cool. And, you know, good luck with that. Let's see. Next, for some reason, which is not fully explained, we get an introduction of Greg Gagne, Larry the Axe Henning, Baron Von Roschke, Sergeant Slaughter, Cowboy Bob Orton, and Ric Flair, and they are all introduced as they sit at ringside. They are all St. Louis legends, apparently. I always thought of Ric Flair as more of a North Carolina legend, but whatever. Bob Orton, Cowboy Bob Orton, that makes sense. All right, so all these legends were in the front row ringside, and they were all introduced one by one, and whatever. It was interesting. It was fun to see. I enjoyed it. Next, after this little introduction of the legends, Jinder Mahal out first for the WWE Championship match against Randy Orton. Jinder out first to the ring with the Bollywood boys. Do they still go by that? Or are they now the Singh brothers? I don't know. Um, Randy Orton came out second. And I made a prediction to the people I was watching the show with that one of the legends would somehow be involved in the match and that Jinder Mahal would retain the championship. And lo and behold, that's exactly what happened. Uh, the Bollywood boys got involved when uh, Randy Orton did an RKO on Jinder in the ring and covered him, and the Singh brothers pulled Jinder's foot and put it on the rope and got the referee's attention, and it wasn't the three count. So the referee notices that they put his foot on the rope, and he ejects them from ringside. Well, they throw a hissy fit, but they kind of uh, talk to each other quietly, you know, whispering in each other's ears. And they decide they're going to attack Cowboy Bob Orton, who is Randy Orton's father, and is sitting at ringside. And it wasn't a major attack. It was just kind of like, kind of pushing, pointing, and maybe some trash talk type thing. But it was enough to enrage Randy Orton, who came running out of the ring and started fighting with the Singh brothers. And he there was table spots and RKO spots that were pretty wild. An RKO through the table, an RKO on the floor, and yeah, that was what you'd expect. In the meantime, Jinder Mahal recovers in the ring. Randy Orton comes into the ring. Jinder Mahal capitalizes, and yeah, that's exactly what happened. Gender pins Randy Orton and retains the WWE Championship. I will say this much for the Gender Mahal Randy Orton match. Both guys gave it their all. Both guys looked like a million bucks. The crowd was reacting very appropriately. They told a great story in the ring. Gender Mahal showed that he does belong at this level with the championship which was something nobody was sure of because he's been a jobber most of his WWE career. But he looked really good, and Randy Orton looked motivated, which is always great because when Randy Orton is motivated, he puts on fantastic matches. And that's what happened here. Gender and Randy just did a fantastic job. It was a really good, fun match. But it ended the way it should have ended, and I'm sure the feud will continue, but... Kudos to both of them. Great job. I enjoyed it. I thought it was the right call. And yeah, let's see if the Indian market picks up since Jinder Mahal had his first real title defense and he came out on top yet again. He cheated, sort of. Well, he didn't cheat. The Singh brothers did. And Randy Orton kind of got distracted. So he didn't really cheat because Randy Orton went after the Singh brothers outside the ring 
and forgot about gender, which was the fatal flaw in his plan, and gender capitalized and won the match. So, yeah, it was really, really good. I really thought it was the right call. I thought it was well done, and I am so impressed with both guys. Randy was motivated, sharp, crisp, great. Gender was very good. He showed that he belonged, and yeah. Congratulations to both guys. You guys did an amazing job. Match quality, it was... I'd, I'd give it a B. It wasn't the greatest match you'd ever seen, but it was a very entertaining, good quality match that told a good story. And that's all it was supposed to do, and it accomplished that. Next, we have the men's mo Money in the Bank ladder match. I'm not really going to talk too much about this because to go through it, you know, move for move, who did what when would be impossible because as soon as I I would type out one note that something is going on, by the time I finished writing, something else was already happening. There were some interesting things. Um, Sami Zayn does the super slow climb up the ladder only to be cut off by a flying AJ Styles, which was really, really cool. Um, AJ Styles came out first, of course. Oh, I should mention, let me back up here. At the start, uh, during the entrances, AJ was out first. I don't remember who came out next. AJ was super over. Crowd popped big time. Um, then Shinsuke Nakamura comes out and right away from behind on the ramp, still at the top of the ramp, he gets blindsided from behind by Baron Corbin and lo long story short, Shinsky gets taken backstage by, I don't know, assistants or other referees or someone, and we don't see him. So now it's a five-man ladder match, because Shinsky is in the back. And, uh, yeah, a lot of good stuff happened. Like I said, Sami Zayn did the kind of silly... And this is why I don't like multiple person, like... More than two people ladder matches because you just see guys like lying around waiting for their cue. And then the one guy just whoever it is has to do this really tired, slow, sluggish crawl up the ladder. Oh, it's so hard. I can't do it. I can't do it. Only to later, you know, get knocked off and then very quickly bounce back and do some insane flippy move off the top rope. So yeah, he can do a flippy move off the top rope or some fancy roll up or whatever, but he couldn't climb the ladder when nobody was in the ring. So th that just kind of ruins all suspension of disbelief for me. Um, what else happened in that match? Uh, Corbin and AJ Styles had a great exchange outside the ring. Back in the ring, hell of a kick to Corbin by Sami Zayn. Nobody with an advantage. Uh, Kevin Owens up the ladder reaching, but Styles cuts him off, grabbing the leg on the ladder, which is standard stuff. AG delivers a devastating firearm carry slam to Owens outside the ring onto the ladder, which was balanced between the steps and the announce table. And that was just a sick looking spot. I, it looked like it was very safe, but it was just a sick looking spot. AJ Styles hanging from the chain at one point after Dolph Ziggler knocked the ladder out from under his feet and AJ was about to grab the briefcase but he grabbed the chain just as the ladder was kicked away so he's just hanging up there. He then takes a wicked bump falling from the chain which is, I don't know, it's got to be 10 feet, 12 feet. I don't know how many feet that is but that's quite a drop to the canvas below which is what happened, he fell. Um, another part that just cracked me up was Baron Corbin is in the ring alone. He's got the ladder set up. He starts climbing the ladder. He's not slow climbing. He's just doing this forceful. Okay, I'm going up here to grab this briefcase and that'll be that. And Shinsuke Nakamura's music hits and Baron Corbin, instead of continuing to climb, stops mid ladder turns and looks at Shinsuke Nakamura casually walking to the ring and kind of doing poses for the fans and just 
popping the crowd, but Corbin is on the ladder. He should be getting the briefcase, but no, no, no. He's just going to stand there on the ladder and watch Shinsuke Nakamura's entrance to the ma- or re-entrance to the match. Um, Nakamura obviously massively over with the fans. Um, Nakamura pretty much started cleaning house because he was the freshest guy. He was just in the back for the majority of the match. He Kinshasa to Owens outside the ring. Uh, Kinshasa to everybody basically. Um, really cool spot. Uh, AJ on one side of the ladder wanting to climb and Nakamura on the other. And they're just like looking at each other through the ladder. They're not even trying to climb at this point. Fans are going nuts as there is this just awesome stare down. I mean, this is like Clint Eastwood type stuff. Just two gunslingers staring each other down. Um, They kind of push the ladder aside and they go at it. And it is just fun. Nakamura and Styles have the ring to themselves and are just... Popping the crowd with great back and forth before Nakamura puts a sleeper on Styles and then into an exploder suplex. Why Nakamura and Styles isn't the main event of a major pay per view on its own, I have no clue. It should be a WrestleMania match. It should be a WrestleMania main event. Anyway, let's skip to the end of the match because it's really not. There's not all that much to talk about except the ending, which is. Corbin knocks AJ and Nakamura off the ladder as they were climbing simultaneously from both sides. And he climbs up uh, the ladder himself and grabs the Money in the Bank briefcase. And there you have it, winner. And the new Mr. Money in the Bank is Baron Corbin, which should be of no surprise. He's a big guy, and as we all know, Vince McMahon loves big sweaty men. If you get that reference... Y'all laugh. Okay, so what what did I think of the show? I thought, oh, the f- the beginning toward even into the middle of the show, it was just sort of a nightmare. Oh wait a second, there I did forget to talk about a Brizango and Ascension tag team match. <sighs> Nothing happened. Brizango won their faces being super put over by the announcers so just because i forgot to mention that i'm mentioning it now so nobody freaks out it says hey you didn't mention the brisango and ascension match well okay it was it was a fine match it was slightly above average i would say um as i said brisango wins or they win and fans go nuts obviously brisango are now a heel comedy act uh, not a heel, I mean a face comedy act. And it's getting over with the fans, and that's great for them. I mean, I'm happy that something is working for a fan, Vandango, a Fandango and Tyler Breeze, because both those guys are really fantastic wrestlers and deserve better than what they've had. So if this is any kind of push for them, that's fantastic. Okay, so about about the card and about the whole pay-per-view, what did I think of it? Oh, the booking for half the show was so bad. No no forethought was put into this. Nobody thought, hey, if a man grabs the briefcase in the first ever women's Money in the Bank ladder match, it's gonna look kind of bad optically. The optics, the politics of it are gonna be kind of bad. It's gonna piss off a lot of people and not in a good Let's get heat kind of way. It's just going to go, oh, wow, you guys are clueless. And that's what happened. That's what that is. Awful, awful, awful stuff. And then to follow it up with an intentional count out on the SmackDown Tag Team Championship match. No, no, no. Just bad, bad, bad stuff. Um, Lana was bad. I mean, Naomi did what she could with her. But Lana just learned a few moves, and it looked like she just learned a few moves for this match. And while she might have been the ravishing Russian before when she was just uh, Rusev's valet, right now, as a singles women's wrestler, no, the fans are going to turn on her. I can feel it. It hasn't happened yet, I don't think. 
But I'm pretty sure that the fans are going to turn on her because she is a caricature character. What I mean by that is she is... I think she's doing the gimmick that Emma was originally supposed to do. But didn't, you know, the whole Emmalina thing. So I think they gave it to Lana. And I thought that no matter who got that gimmick, it was never going to get over. Because this is not 19... 95 and stuff like this just doesn't fly anymore it's ridiculous it's stupid and I'm almost sure that the fans are going to turn on Lana and she just doesn't have what it takes to pull off this particular gimmick she's much better as the cold hearted kind of frigid but very sexy valet for Rusev she wants to be a wrestler fine but just drop the bombshell aspect of it with the sequent dresses and what have you that's it's just bad just bad get rid of it don't do it you're just gonna it's just gonna hurt lana and nobody's gonna enjoy it um other than that for the most part (laughs) except for the things that i've mentioned which is a lot of things truthfully the main event kind of pulled pulled things up a bit made things better but what really is the match of the night was Jinder Mahal versus Randy Orton. And they really brought this pay-per-view up from a D- minus to my final grade, which is probably a C-, minus, honestly, just because there was so much bad stuff. And some of the bad stuff wouldn't have been so bad if it had been placed differently on the card. But terrible followed by terrible followed by terrible it just sets the mood that it's going to be a terrible card so there you have it i give it a c minus and it's all thanks to jinder mahal and randy orton and the men's ladder match and i really didn't care that uh baron corbin won one way or the other i figured he would eventually because he's a big guy and vince loves big sweaty men so Yeah, sure, why not? Why not Baron Corbin? He seems to work well with uh, AJ Styles. He'll probably work fine with Nakamura. It's fine. Nothing spectacular, it's fine. But it was was a fun match. It helped bring up the grade also. Alright, let's... let's, I don't know, should we get rid of the minus, just make it a C? A grade of C for the night? It feels a bit like a C minus, but a C might be more fair. Uh, okay. The final grade for the for the entire pay per view is a C. It's just average, and it's just and it only gets that letter grade because there was some good stuff on the card that brought up and kind of wiped away the bad taste of the horrible things on the card. And there and as I said, there's tons of horrible things on the card. So there you have it. Final grade a C. Do better, WWE. I know you can, but you got to get out of your bubble and just just realize what your own video packages are talking about and don't do everything to subvert it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the WWE Money in the Bank pay-per-view, the SmackDown edition. Um, I just wanted to talk about this because I hadn't talked about wrestling for a little while here I've been kind of MIA from my channel and I wanted to change that so I thought I'd talk about uh, Money in the Bank pay-per-view and yeah there you have it I hope you enjoyed it I hope you enjoyed this video let me know if you agree with my thoughts on this video in the comments below please thumbs up please subscribe and to my wonderful, wonderful subscribers, thank you so much for being patient with me while I go through a lot of crap this month. I already mentioned the death of a friend, but there's been other things. Ugh. Anyway, guys, this is Rob for Games Into Me saying Money in the Bank 2017 SmackDown version. Eh. It was. It had its moments, but there was a lot of bad ones too. Until next time, guys, be good to each other, and I'll catch you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.